What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Again, today I bring to you this different style of news because I broke my studio lights, or at least one of them, when I was doing some flooring and moving stuff around and, and turning the studio into a temporary bedroom to sleep in. So because of that, I have new stuff on the way to get that fixed, but that will not arrive until Wednesday. And truth be told, I actually like this style a lot easier because it's a lot easier just to read through, do the research, and then talk about it than it is to sit down and write a complete full page script on it. But let me know what you think about this kind of style in the comments below. Moving on. First thing on my topic list today is going to be using the sound of your skull for password. I know that sounds freaking weird, but they are actually, what they're doing is that this is like a sensor that they're putting on your skull, like attached to your head or, or somewhere on your head, and they they put a sound or they, they make a sound go into the skull, and however that resonates throughout your skull and returns back to the microphone, basically is your password. They say that the density and everything in your skull and, and the, the sound that resonates off of it is, is unique to each individual. And through their testing on this, they were actually able to get 97% of the time accuracy to identify who people were based off of their test just from the skull sounds alone. So that's actually kind of interesting because what they go in a little bit deeper into this article, they start talking about um, basically integrating this with everyday devices that people use. So for whatever reason, let's say if you answer the phone, you could verify who you are just from your phone uh, if it was integrated into your phone. They play a little sound, say, yep, that's the person I'm talking to. So still pretty cool, not exactly groundbreaking or just like revolutionary science, but it is kind of interesting to know that your skull makes a unique sound from having some kind of sound blasted into it. I mean, that's, I don't know. I found that kind of interesting, so. Next thing up is, this is actually something that <laughs> I've thought about before, and I'm, I'm actually excited to see this, but Disney wants to use the Nokia virtual reality camera to film behind the scenes in movies. And that's, 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 the, that's a badass idea. I mean, that's the only way I can say it. It's a badass idea. And the reason why is because they can put this behind the scenes when they're filming certain things. Like for, in the film they said, or in this article, they said something about Star Wars. Not saying that they would do that in Star Wars, but they said as an example, your favorite films that you want to go through and watch, they are looking at actually giving you a behind the scenes virtual reality experience. It's not really virtual reality, but it, you know, give, give the VR headset experience and a 360 degree view of everything they're doing. I find this super exciting because I'm into videography, I'm into editing and you know what they do to film certain things. So if they have like a behind the scenes thing where I can go and I can see everything that they're doing, everything from the actors, directors backstage to the food sitting on a table somewhere, I mean that's just that just lets you like really lets you get immersed into it, you know, like just experience the filmmaking and behind your favorite films and that is pretty awesome. The only downside is this Nokia camera costs sixty thousand dollars. But somebody like Disney, that's literally just like loose change found in a, in a sofa somewhere. I mean, it's nothing. So that is definitely something I'm excited to see. I want to see some DVDs having that VR experience. I'm getting an HTC Vive, so hopefully, you know, I can start watching those 3D, you know, walk around 3D videos or, or not 3D, but 360 degree videos, you know, as the extras. Definitely something I'm looking forward to. Pretty awesome. Next up, kind of creepy, but still kind of interesting. They have developed swimming robots that are, well, they're basically snakes. They're, they're swimming snake robots. And as creepy as it is, if you don't like snakes, I don't really have a, an issue with them, but as creepy as it is, it's actually completely useful because the idea here is that they can use this to basically explore um, underneath ships or just things that are submerged in water that maybe a diver can't get to very easily. They can attach cameras, they can have uh, lights on the front here, and they use a snake-like motion to swim through the water. And if they needed to, they can even give themselves a boost. If I can find it here. Yeah, so they can give themselves a boost through their tail. So that's pretty cool. If they need to get like a boost of speed. So they can swim faster, maybe against currents, or whatever the case is, they can give themselves a boost through their tail. So that's definitely interesting technology. A little weird, definitely interesting technology. A solar powered device that could deliver clean water, electricity, and internet to Africa. Now, when I first saw this, I'm like, hey, this is cool. It's a little device standalone. It does solar power, cleans water, and, you know, connects to GPS. That's really cool. But then I read that it cost 
upwards of a half of a million dollars. Okay, $450,000. Yikes. And it's pretty big. I mean, this thing is huge. It takes up like a warehouse. However, the technology is still pretty cool, and I'm looking at it because it can produce up to 1,320 gallons of clean water a day. It purifies wastewater uh, using filters through graphene. It's graphene-based technology. It, then it, it heats it and distills it. So basically, this is going to be able to clean water in, air, to, in areas where they don't have access to clean water, and it's going to be able to do that with free energy from the sun, assuming it's sunny, which it probably is in Africa. And on top of all that, they will also be able to connect to the internet via either 3G, 4G, you know, any kind of cellular connection, or uh, connecting to satellites for satellite-based internet. So that's pretty cool. Just cost way too much. That's my only thing. I'd like to see them get this cost down, make it more affordable to where more investors can come in and put these in villages. Maybe countries can end up buying them to put them in areas where they don't have access to clean water and electricity and all that other stuff, but still a pretty cool concept overall. And on to space exploration, NASA just signed a contract to, to offer $67 million to develop an electronic, a solar, electro, ele, bleh, a solar electric propulsion for deep space exploration. Now basically this form of propulsion is taking solar electricity and converting it to propulsion that is not very strong in the aspect of like raw thrust, but it does fire for longer and it is renewable because it uses a solar power through, from the sun. So this is kind of interesting because it's gonna allow us to do deeper explorations, kind of like the Voyager, the Voyager uh, exploration project that's been going on for like, I don't know, 30 years or something. So this is gonna be able, be able to allow us to go faster and deeper into space. Or the funny thing that I can think about with this entire situation is this is definitely, you know, kind of a Star Trek, you know, idea here. It's a pre-warp idea. Um, in the future, let's say 30 years from now, if we develop this and they can get this done within you know, a decade or, or they're saying up to 2030, but let's say like 30 years from now, we figure out mass energy, right? And then we figure out how to travel faster than light, whether you know some FTL drive or some warp drive or whatever they end up figuring out to go faster than light or really fast in however way, this could possibly just be outdated by then, just because of uh, technology is evolving so much. Now, of course, that is a far-fetched idea. I'm not saying that that's going to happen in 30 years. I'm just saying that the way technology is evolving, it is possible that this kind of technology is going to be so outdated by the time uh, it makes it to anything that's worth exploring. So, how interesting can it be? I don't know. I, I know if we had better or more sensors, the higher quality cameras on the Voyager, or maybe a better plan, maybe we'd have more information about deep space. So maybe this is gonna replace the Voyager project and give us more information of our own solar system. Still pretty cool, yes. I wanna see it developed, absolutely. Will it be out of date in 30 years? I really hope so. This is kind of a side thing. I, I don't know if anyone else out there owns an NES. I own an NES. I like playing it from time to time, probably once a month when I'm super bored. But the biggest thing with the NES is the cable. You know, I, I pull it out from my entertainment center and I basically either have to sit on the, sit on the edge of my uh, sofa or sit on the ground, which I usually just end up sitting on the ground because it's more comfortable. This is a wireless adapter that basically goes from your NES system to your controller, making it completely wireless. That's badass. And here's the kicker. It's only $20. 20 bucks. So if you're somebody like me, who love the NES growing up, and you have one sitting in your living room, but you don't like the cords, 20 bucks right here will get you a wireless adapter. I will definitely have that link in the description for you to check out. Last but not least, and I was on the fence of talking about this just because it seems a little weird, especially the way they wrote this article, but um, this company is claiming, this BioViva company is claiming to have found a way to use gene therapy to reverse or extend somebody's age. And what's crazy about it is that the technology that they said that they have developed cannot even be practiced here in the US. So they actually went overseas somewhere else in order to you know, conduct further tests on humans. So basically what they're saying here is that the telomeres, t t telomeres, 
I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm probably butchering it, but whatever it is, is on the end of all of the chromosomes that protects it while the chromosome divides and duplicates. And every time it divides and duplicates, just a little bit more is shaved off the top, making it you know, to where it's less protected and more damaged as you go along. And eventually it stops dividing and dies. And that's how you age, apparently, according to this article. What they have found the way to do is to extend that, to add, it, add that back to the chromosome that will essentially reverse or stop aging or extend somebody's age by doing that. Is it mad science? I don't really know. I do know that they're going overseas because they can't get it approved to do human test, human testing here in the United States. Still a really interesting technology, even if it has no merit to it. It would be, I, it's one of those I'm hoping for the best. I'm, I hope that this you know kind of technology gets developed to a point that, hey, by the time I'm 50, maybe they'll be like, hey, Jason, here's a little shot. Congratulations, you're 40 again. Come back in you know one year and we'll make you 30 again, etc. I think that would be pretty cool. Or maybe you get to a certain point in your age where you can stop aging. I don't know, that'd be pretty cool. As far-fetched as this idea is, I still wanted to talk about it because I think it is an interesting idea. So that's it folks, thank you for watching. Again, if you don't like this or you do like this, let me know in the comments as far as this style goes. Uh, I actually really like doing it like this. I mean, it's just a lot easier and faster for me. It allows me to get this done and then move on with the rest of my day because I also do have a full-time job. So definitely a little bit better way for me. But however, if you guys want the old way, I can go back to the studio and start putting myself in front of a green screen. Follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits, like and subscribe below and have a good day.